leaders, when they make a mistake, people say, well, how can they survive that? How can they? It's because, because they've developed levels of leadership under them. They've, but if you haven't been a very good leader and you're just at the bottom and you make a mistake, it, it, it's going to be over very, very quickly. So the question I would be asking, here's the questions I would ask for your exercise. Question number one, what level am I on with most of the people? In other words, find out your average level for your, if you've got 10 people, if you took all of them and, and kind of said, this is the average, what level would you be on? The second question would be, who was on each level with me? Put their names beside each level so that you have an idea. You know, these three people are on level one, these two people are on level two, get their names. Then the third question you ask yourself is, what do I have to do to increase my influence and leadership with them one level? How do I get them from level one to level two? Well, it's very simple. To get them from level one to level two, you've got to develop relationships with them. To get them from level number two to level number three is you've got to put some wins under their belt. You've got to get success with them because as they see you become successful, they feel the success and they'll put you on level three. To get from level number three to level number four, you've got to spend mentoring time with them and personally develop them and equip them and train them to to be successful. So let me do, let me close with one more thing. And, and that is there's a five step process on level number four, the people development level. There's a five step process of how to train and equip people. Let me give it to you. It's very simple. Step number one, the first thing I do to equip people is what I call the I do it stage. Very simply, if I'm going to equip you to do something, I have to be able to do it myself. Again, we teach what we know, we reproduce what we are. Too many leaders are like travel agents. They're sending people where they've never gone themselves. <laughs> you need to be a tour guide leader. Tour guides say, get on the bus. I've lived here all my life. I'm going to show you people and meet people and things that I've, I've experienced all my life. Be a tour guide leader, not a travel agent leader. So level number one in equipping people is I do it. Level number two is I do it and you are with me. The greatest way to train people is by modeling. The greatest motivational principle in the world is people do what people see. Stanford Research says 89% of what you and I know today, we know because we saw someone else do it. We saw it visually first. 89% is visual learning, 10% is audio learning, and 1% is through the other senses. So, I do it is stage one of equipping. I do it and you're with me as stage two. You're watching me. I'm modeling for you. I'm the example. I'm showing you how to do whatever this is I'm training you to do. Step number three is you do it and I'm with you. Step number three is you do it and I'm with you. Now I'm watching you. You've watched me for a while. You've learned from me. You've asked a lot of questions. Now I'm checking you out to make sure that you do it well. Level step number four in equipping people is you do it. You do it. In fact, simply here's how this works. You do it. Now, most people think at level four that they've equipped somebody. They've gone from I do it, I do it, you're with me, you do it, and I'm with you, to you do it. Can I tell you something? You've never equipped somebody until they go to stage five. Stage five is you do it, and someone is with you. That's when you begin to multiply yourself when you can get to stage five, level five, in training and developing and equipping people. I do it, I do it, you're with me, you do it, I'm with you, you do it, you do it, and someone else is with you. Now you've started to multiply yourself, now you've started to equip yourself. Does this make sense? Okay, all right, look at your neighbor and tell them, I am really learning a lot. <laughs> tell them that right now, I am really learning a lot. Look right back at the person who says, I'm really learning a lot, and say, thank God, that's why I brought you. That's why I brought you. Okay. It's 20 minutes after, f after th three. We're going to take a 25-minute break. If you'll come back at a quarter to four, okay, I'll teach for one more hour. I'll teach to about 4.40, 4.45, okay? Now, here's what we're going to do. 
I'm going to, yes, David? Okay, I'm going to go out and sign books. They, they want me to go out by the book table. I'll go out. If you've got the books, I'll sign the books by the book table. I'll meet you right out there. But let's do it. We've got 25 minutes. Go get refreshments. Do whatever you've got to do. At, 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 listen, at quarter till, please be back in here. Roger, kind of bring them in here. About 20 till, kind of start pulling them in. At a quarter till, so I can teach for one more hour. Okay, are you having a good time? Are you having a good time? Okay, let's go take a break. All right. Thanks, man. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. How are we doing? Have you got one more session left inside of you? Yes. Now, let me just say a couple of things here because there are a whole bunch of people still out there and they're going to be coming in for the next five minutes, I know. I, I felt bad because I, um, there was a line still for the books. And so what I'll do is when I'm done speaking, I'll go right back out to that table. And if you have not had your book signed, uh, I'll, I'll go back out for maybe 15, 20 minutes and I'll sign before I have to go because I, I have to speak somewhere else this evening in, in here in town. So, but if you didn't get your book signed, if you'll go straight out to that table afterwards or if you still haven't gotten your books, if you'll get them quickly, I'll, I'll, do my best to, uh, I'll do my best to sign them. Okay. Um, boy, I wish I had time for Q&A so that you could ask questions about things I've taught today. But as I wrap up and I come into my last session for the next 45 minutes, um, there is so much I want to teach. And there's such, such a limited amount of time. And so I'm, I'm kind of working through what do I, what, what do I want to kind of give you that can really add value and, and help you. And I think what I want to do is, um, first of all, I want to say that what I just lectured on, the five levels of leadership, uh, the, the power group, it's the group that's, uh, that, or the power events, the group that has sponsored this, they do corporate seminars on the five levels of leadership on my material. This is major use throughout the United States. In fact, I just did a major webcast with Microsoft throughout all of America. And if you uh, would be interested in having them come to you and teach for two days the five levels of leadership, they have a, a corporate training called Developing the Leader Within You. If you just go out there to wherever their uh, place is and tell them you're interested in corporate events, um, they'll, they'll be glad to give you that information. So I, I hope that many of you do that. If you want to know more about the five levels of leadership, since I didn't have time to really teach all of it that I would have liked to, uh, it, it's in my book. It's a whole chapter in my book called Developing the Leader Within You. So if you have that book, you can get a little bit more of the, because when, during the break, I've had people say, boy, I'd like to have a little bit more on the five levels of, of leadership and influence. Okay. What I would like to teach now, in fact, I may try, I, I, did, so, I, I did so well with this, I may try again here. Um, now that I know which way to do it, I, I would like to take, um, oh, I don't know, not a long time, maybe uh, 10 minutes, and I would like to teach you how to prioritize your life so that you can be very successful in life. Because here's, first of all, let, let's start here. A lot of people, they ask me if I do any teaching on time management. They'll say, do you have any books on time management? Do you, have any, do you do any teaching on time management? And I always give them the same answer. No, I don't do any teaching on time management, and I have no books on it. And here's why. Time management is an oxymoron. <laughs> I, I'm blown away by people who say, well, teach me how to manage my time. First of all, you can't manage your time. It, it, it's going to go on whether you like it or not. So... I don't teach time management, but when people want to make the best use of their time, I teach priorities. I teach them how to prioritize their life so that they can get the most out of it. I made a statement earlier today that I could tell, I didn't stay there very long, but I could tell it caught your attention. I was talking about my life and talking about that I only do four things. And I, I could tell you, you were kind of mentally hanging there for a little bit, and I, you were thinking, I mean, first of all, you were thinking, first of all, if I can only do four things well, the first thing you're thinking is I'm kind of a worthless individual, which I would tell you, yes, I am, and I'm very proud of my worthlessness. 
fact, I tell people all the time, I'll say, no, no, you don't want me. I'm worthless there. No, 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 no. I'm worth, oh, no, 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 no. It's amazing how much time you'll free up if you just declare you're worthless. Okay. A lot of people get involved in a lot of things because they have an ego bigger than their IQ. Just back off and say, no, I'm not any good at that. You don't want me. Okay. But I told you that I only did four things. And when I was talking about only doing four things, I can tell you, okay, four things. He only does four things. In fact, it was interesting. The other day, my wife Margaret and I were having the conversation about the four things that I do. And she was telling me, she said, John, I really think you only are good at three of them anymore. So I'm getting less and less. I figured this way. You start with four, you go to three, you two. When I can do nothing, they just bury me, Okay. <laughs> Many years ago, I'm talking about 1972, when I was working on a business degree, I had this course about that taught me the Pareto Principle. And I, it's not my principle, but it's a principle that in 1972 I, I had in a business course, and I said to myself, I am going to learn this principle because this can change my life. And for 30 plus years, I have learned and lived by the principle I'm about to teach you about priorities. And it's very simple. And if you can get me back on the overhead, let me see if I can just kind of put this together for you for a second. On a piece of paper, I want you to do the same thing that I'm doing right now. Put, um, I want you to have two columns. And those two columns should have headed up priorities and production. Let's start right there. Now, Pareto was the guy that taught what we call the 2080 principle. Let's look at our priority line first. Pareto would teach you and me that if we have 10 things to do, the first thing we should do is list them according to priorities. Put number one is number one, put number two is number two. The least important of all should be number 10. Now, Preto says, if we, in, if we prioritize correctly the 10 things that we need to get accomplished, here's what he says. If instead of doing all 10 of those things, we just do the top two. And on a piece of paper, do exactly like I'm doing. This is a visual teaching. So he says, if, if we have 10 things to do, but we only do the top two of those 10 things, Here's what he says. We will get an 80% return of everything that we need to accomplish in our life. Now that's a tremendous visual right there. What he's saying to us is if we have 10 things to do, but we only do the top two, we don't do the bottom eight. We just do number one and number two. That we will receive an 80% return of everything that we need in our life. Now he goes on to say, let's say we ignore the top two, and instead of doing the top two, we do the bottom eight. We do numbers three through 10. Here's what Pareto says. If we do the bottom eight, we will only get a 20% return of everything that we want to accomplish in our life. Now, when you just look at the visual that you have on your paper, it's pretty amazing. Here's a person who does two things, and they get an 80% return. They get a return four times what they've done. Here's a person who does eight things, and they just get a fourth of the return. Now, it's from this, from this visual and from this teaching of Pareto that, we, that we, we say in the States, we have an expression, that is, it's not how hard you work, it's how smart you work. Basically, this is a principle that teaches us choose or lose. You either choose your priorities. If you don't, 
you'll lose your effectiveness. Preto basically said, it's not doing everything, it's doing the main thing that's going to be the difference in your life. Now, I first learned this principle in 1972. I've taught it thousands of times. I've lived it in my life. And basically, the day I did it, I said, okay, John, you're going to very quickly, or as quickly as you possibly can, you're going to find out what you do well, and you're going to stay in your strength zone, and you're not going to do things you don't do well. So from 1972 to about 1982, it took me about 10 years to figure out what I did well. I only do four things well. So I only do four things. You see, the question is not, will your calendar be full? I'm going to assume all of our calendars are full. We're all busy. Is that true? How many of you are busy? Okay. okay. The question is not, will our calendar be full? The question is, who will fill our calendar? Because the person that fills the calendar is the one who determines the priorities. And so because I understand that, and because I've learned that principle, I only do four things, and, the, and you say, well, how do I prioritize my life so that I only do four things? There are three words that I want you to write down. The first word is requirement. Very simply, you've got to ask yourself, what's required of me? In other words, when I prioritize my life, I have to do what I have to do. In other words, there are certain things that are required of me. That's not a choice. It's not an option. I have to do them. You know, if I don't do them, I'm going to get fired. So, so when you get your priorities together, the first question you ask, must, you ask yourself is, what's required of me? Now, I do that continually. In fact, when I am applying for some kind of new job or new contract or whatever it is, one of the things I do is I sit down and I ask them this very simple question. What do I have to do that no one else can do except me? That's a huge question. In other words, what do I have to do that I have to do? No one else can do it. I can't train somebody to do it. I can't equip somebody to do it. I can't develop somebody to do it. I can't empower somebody to do it. I can't delegate somebody to do it. In other words, I have to do this. Because whatever it is that you have to do that you cannot give to someone else, train somebody else, develop someone else to do, whatever that is, you're going to have to do it. So the first thing in, in settling your priorities is what's required of me. That's the word requirement. The second word is return. What gives me the greatest return? Simply stated. When I do something that I do very well, it brings a huge return back to me. It brings a huge return back to my organization. Now that gets me to the four things that I do. Because after 10 years, from 72 to 82, after asking myself, asking people, searching, looking at what I was doing, I, I came to the conclusion within 10 years that there are four things that I should spend my life doing, and I should not spend my life doing anything else but these four things. Now, I'm going to give you the four things, but, but they're, they're, they only help you in light of helping you know how to do this. They don't help you in light of the fact these are not going to be your four things. In fact, for you, it may be three things. It could be five things. I don't know. But, but, but these four things I have looked at, and these are the ones that really, that, that I'm good at. So my four are, I lead, I create, I communicate, and I network. Those are the four things I do. I'm a very good leader, so I lead. I'm very creative. That's why I'm always writing. I'm, I'm, just a, I'm just a creative thinker. There's nothing I love more than being by myself with a legal pad and a pen, just, just thinking thoughts and creating. So I, I, I'm good at creating. I, I, I'm good at communicating. So I, I do a lot of communicating. That's, this whole day is set aside basically for me to communicate. And, and I, I enjoy meeting friends and networking and trying to, to put together partnerships. Now, those are the four things I do well. I lead, create, communicate, and network. Now, what that means is, those are the four things that I do. 
If you looked on my calendar, you would find that that's all that's on my calendar as far as business is concerned. I'm either creating, I'm either spending time creating or I'm spending time communicating. This has been a day that's been set aside for several months now. This is a day I'm going to be at KL and I'm going to communicate today. I'm either communicating, creating, leading, or networking. And that's all that's on my calendar. <coughs> I do nothing else. I'm going to come back to that in just a moment. But let me go back to the three R's because I've only given you two. And the melancholies are starting to get nervous. They're saying, now, you know, there's another one in there. I know there is. I just, where, where's the R word? The R, the R, the R. The first word is requirement. What's required of me? The first, second word is return. What gives me the highest return? The third R is reward. What is rewarding to me? Because one of the things I've discovered about prioritizing my life correctly is this. If I don't enjoy doing it, I'll stop doing it. Sooner or later, I'll find a way not to do it. Now, what you want to do is you want to get everything lined up so what is required of you and what gives you the greatest return also gives you the greatest reward. Can I tell you how good you can get at this? When what is required of you, what gives you the highest return, and what gives you the greatest reward are the same things. You will be highly successful in life, I guarantee it. Now, let's go down to prioritize in our life and let's, let's go to a teaching that I think is very important. What I'm about to say is a paradigm shift for you. And the, your tendency is when I say it, it will be to emotionally disagree. And I just want you to know that's okay. You can do that. You have a right to be wrong. Okay. I'm kidding you. My name's John. I'm your friend. <laughs> what I'm about to say, though, goes against everything, basically, that we've ever been taught. And, and the reason I know that is in the States, this is major. What I'm about to teach you for the next 10 minutes has more, has more impact upon probably a mass group of people than anything that I've ever taught. So hang with me. Fasten your seatbelts. And listen to me very carefully, because the statement I'm about to say to you is a little bit different than what you're used to hearing. Let me qualify it. I'm talking now about your skills, only your skills, okay? Here's the statement. From this moment on, stop working on your weaknesses. From this moment on, stop working on your weaknesses. Now you say, oh my goodness, John. I'm not even sure I can write that down. What do you mean, stop working on my weaknesses? What I mean is, stop working on your weaknesses. And you say, why should I stop working on my weaknesses? You should stop working on your weaknesses because you are weak in your weaknesses. <laughs> You're not any good in this area. Now, that's against everything we've been...